Hello, welcome to Christian Book Review. I'm Lucas Kitchen. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little, the little funny button. So, Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. This is a special book for me and I want to tell you why. So, I came up in a very conservative Bible church. It was a great upbringing, but I had this idea that if you were going to read a book, it ought to be a book about the Bible or it ought to be the Bible itself. And so, Out of the Silent Planet was one of the first fiction books I really got into kind of after I moved beyond that thinking. And really it was because I started to have enough free time and enough mental bandwidth to expand beyond just reading the Bible and books about the Bible and stuff like that. And so for me, this was a very important moment. So here's my scorecard for fiction books. I've got a copy of it here. So you'll see the age for Out of the Silent Planet. This is really a book for adults. Uh, kids, um, my seven-year-old has requested to listen to Out of the Silent Planet audiobook, but reading it would be pretty tough for a kid. So this is an adult book. Um, the prose, this is C.S. Lewis. I mean, he's, he's a master of lyrical poetic prose and so clearly it's a it's it's a solid win on that front if you just like poeticism then you're going to enjoy this book plot the plot is utterly unique and in fact um, because it was written decades ago this book is a little bit older because it was written decades ago i think you might actually find the plot pretty surprising uh, the things I mean, things that you wouldn't think someone would put in a sci-fi book are in this book. And part of that, and part of its charm, is because it was written quite a while back. And so it kind of harkens back to the, um, you know, that, that older style of sci-fi. And so I really, I really dig that. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, the exposition, so is, you know, in some books there's like this um, exposition dump all at once. Out of the Silent Planet... It has such a tasty, slow reveal, and uh, it keeps you interested, but it gives you a little bit at a time. And by the time you get to the end of this book, it's it's just it's surprising, and you realize, uh, you know, kind of what you've been wondering the whole time. There's this whole kind of set of scenes at the end that reveal, and it's just. Um, it's just it's magical in a way. I mean, it's it's really it kind of is a he offers in this book kind of a a theory of everything um, in a way that I think will surprise you. Uh, conceptually, uh, is it derivative or unique? Absolutely unique. Um, now, is it derivative of the other works that uh, C.S. Lewis was reading? Maybe so, but for me, when I first read this as uh, probably mid-20s, in my mid-20s, it was so unique to me. I was like, wow, I've never, I've never heard anything like that. Um, the dialogue is very lyrical. Um, he has he's he's a master writer, right? So the dialogue is very um, you know it's very character fitted. It's not like monotone one one tone fits all. It's it's character driven, um, and the characters have this um, kind of interesting. Um, uh, some of them have this interesting academic. Uh, approach that is kind of lost in modern colloquialism. So, um, so there's that. That's that's the I'll say the human characters, and then the the characters that are not human, which I'm revealing a little bit about the story. But um, just you know, there's some non-human characters. The the non-human characters each have their own distinctive way of speaking, and so he does a beautiful job of like making each character feel so unique, um, each, and each grouping of characters feel so unique. So in the book, um, Ransom is a philologist, which is someone who is a, an expert on languages, basically. And so um, you could tell that C.S. Lewis loved that, uh, that type of content. And so there's lots in the book about how he reconstructs a language of this um, not reconstructs, but deciphers basically a language of this um, this group, these groups that he meets, and so that's really uh, that's really a fun aspect. Um, let's see, looking at my chart here, 
Um, focus. So what I've got for focus is um, my mind didn't wander, but I didn't put it all the way up at the top because uh, for some readers, their mind might wander. This is a this is a very high concept book. It's a book with with lots of interesting concepts that for me kept my attention, but I know that for some others who have read it, um, their mind kind of wandered. I, I've heard people say it's just totally boring. Um, th- th- like this book is one of those. It's kind of a dividing line. I've noticed that there are people that love this book. And then there's a lot that just, it, they didn't get into it. It You know, they were, I don't know, maybe they were expecting Narnia. Be, that's by C.S. Lewis as well. Maybe they're expecting Narnia and they didn't get Narnia, so they're like, blah. But this is, this is um, you know, this was for me, I was totally tuned in the whole time. The scope, um, so the scope, it, it's, it's more personal than it is political, but it does deal with sort of some corporate, um, you know, some corporate issues. A lot of that kind of sneaks its way into C.S. Lewis's stuff. So, um, so, but it's personal enough that even if, if you don't read political thriller or something like that, I think you can still dig this if you're, um, if you're into that. Um, the narrative style really leaned a lot towards dialogue. I mean, there's a there's a fair amount of um, inner monologue while Ransom is kind of moving through the world he's in, but um, but once he starts coming in contact with other characters, there it's pretty dialogue-driven. There's quite a bit of dialogue. The Christian themes... Okay, so C.S. Lewis is, um, you know, was a, was a Christian, and he is known for writing uh, allegory. Um, he wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe as allegory. Now, what's interesting about in the Narnia series, it always seemed to me like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was allegory, but then the other books felt like they kind of moved away from allegory. So calling the whole series allegory, I don't know, maybe... I mean, it kind of is, but but it also departs from it in a lot of ways. Out of the Silent Planet, I don't, I wouldn't call it allegory exactly. However, there are allegorical themes that show up in it, especially in the second book, Paralandra. Uh, um, but in Out of the Silent Planet, I don't know that I'd call it allegory. However, there are biblical, like strong biblical themes. Now, I put this as subtle on the scorecard because. You could read this book, and if you're not a believer or you know you, you don't have that kind of stuff on your mind, you may not even realize that that's what he's doing. You may not even see the allegorical themes and the biblical themes, uh, but it's it's in there, and it's very interesting. And so, like, I'm always excited. Like, I'm I'm excited about Christian fiction, of course, and so like I'm always excited when I spot those. Um, but I always also try to take note of whether other people would spot them or not. And I'm not sure that just anybody would spot the allegorical themes in Out of the Silent Planet. So I highly suggest if you are into sci-fi and especially Christian fiction of any kind, I highly uh, I highly suggest Out of the Silent Planet. Now I want to give you a word of warning on the trilogy. You'll notice that this is, oops, no, this is a trilogy. This is book one. Each book in the trilogy is so different. It's not, I mean, they're just so, so different. Out of the Silent Planet is one kind of story, and then you get to Paralandra, and it's like, it could be its own standalone book, not in the series. However, you do see the connection because he travels to another um, another planet, but uh, it's so different. And then when you get to That Hideous Strength, which is book three in this series, it is so different from the first two. I mean, it's it's localized. Um, it's in you know. It, anyway, it's it's so so different. And so, if you love C.S. Lewis, I think you'll love each of them. But don't go into them thinking you're going to get the same kind of story each time. To call them a trilogy is almost like you know they're almost more of a collection of books. They wouldn't even really have to be in a particular order, it seems to me. Well, they would for some reasons, but but the content of the stories, you know, they're just they're just so different. So it's a really unique trilogy in that sense that um, it's not, it's just not like hardly anything else I've ever, it's not like anything else I've ever read. So I would highly suggest you get into these if you've got a little bit of reading time and you're interested in sci-fi, especially kind of the, uh, I would call it like, um, nostalgia sci-fi, kind of sci-fi of the past generation where we, they were still figuring out 
a lot of things um, about uh, the planets and space travel and stuff like that. So check out Out of the Silent Planet. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs>